Hey guys, today I want to talk about the June 29th patch notes, and I want to explain a little bit about Blizzard's logic behind some of them, as well as some things that I am just going to take a guess about because I really don't know. So let's get through it. So to start off, uh, there's some quick changes. Battlegrounds, heroes, bug fixes. Pretty easy. The first thing is Battlegrounds. All they're changing is they're bringing Volskaya Foundry back into the ranked hero pool, or uh, Battleground pool. And the reason for this is I'm guessing that they did a bug fix on the map because there was a bug where Mediv could mount up at the same time that he was about to go bird form, he could either pick up or drop an object. And this could also be replicated by simply doing it on top of an object. There was a few ways to replicate it, but essentially one of the turrets or the health packs, if he was to pick it up or drop it the same time that he's about to go bird form, he would be floating up as if he was bird form in human form, allowing him to still cast all of his abilities, but be untargetable and move over objects. It was pretty ridiculous. Let's just say that 9 out of 10 Abathurs hated him. Into the heroes. Before I go into these, I talked to a few people about heroes that I thought needed buffed or nerfed, so I'm going to call out some of these before I even see them at all. And the few of them that I mentioned was essentially Phoenix, Tracer, Zagara, Deckard, Anubarak, Blaze, would all see nerfs this patch. Those were the ones that I pretty much called out. Now, I'd be curious to see if I was right on any of these. The ones that surprised me to see were Cassia, uh, Zul'jin, Nazebo, Probius, Ana, Rhaegar, and uh, I would say, honestly, Joanna surprised me. Diablo surprised me a little bit. He's still in a weird spot after his last rework, so I think that's fine. Yorel, I expected. I figured she would get buffs this patch. And I'd figure, uh, I, I mean, out of these, I figure Ana and Rhaegar are going to get buffs. But let's see what actually happens. So Cassia. Cassia has a new functionality on her W. Her W or her level 1 talent for her W. And now it says reduces blinding lights, cooldown, and mana costs by 33%. Basic attacks against blinded enemies deal 100% bonus damage. Pretty easy. You get more Ws, they do more damage. Uh, let's go into the Cassia talents really quick. And let's see what she had before this. So she used to have... Seraphim's Light, reduce blinding cost, mana cost from 70 to 40. Basic attacks reduce the cooldown. So now the cooldown and mana cost is reduced flat and auto attacks deal more damage. Level 7, Ease Impale, bonus damage threshold is increased from 50% to 60% of target's maximum health. So the bonus damage, which was 50%, is now 60%. If you guys want to know what Impale is, I will go into it really quick. Uh, for her, Impale is increased 50% health on targets that are 50%. Sorry, uh, enemies that are below 50%, you deal 50% more damage. So the threshold is increased of the target's max health. That means that you do 50% more damage if, if they're 60% or lower. All right, now for Phoenix, I just want to see everything nerfed. Health scaling is reduced. Health regeneration scaling is reduced. Shield capacitor scaling is reduced. Shield regeneration is reduced. Damage increased from his planet cracker is reduced. Sorry, 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 sorry. Damage is increased from his planet cracker. Okay. So they buff his planet cracker. They nerf everything else. Level 7. His Q talent damage bonus is reduced. His E attack speed bonus is increased. Interesting. We may be seeing more of that attack speed talent on his E. Level 13 is at a, sorry, is a, a Danium shell. Armor received after warping is increased. His rapid recharge, shield recharge amount is increased. And his auxiliary shield uh, regeneration amount is reduced from 15 to 10%. Gray main, the cocktail has been reduced uh, its cooldown has been reduced from 10 to 9 seconds. That's good. The perfect aim talent mana refund is increased. That's a good amount of refund. I think that's almost the full amount, actually. Level 13, Visceral Attacks was removed. I'm going to pull up Greymane's talents really quick. 
just so we can see what was removed. So the visceral attacks, Worgen's basic attacks reduced the razor swipes cooldowns by 1.5 seconds, which was a talent that wasn't really picked very much. Unfettered Assault is the new level 13. Now causes Worgen's basic attacks to reduce. Okay, so they combined a talent into another one. So Unfettered Assault was this one. It was increased this, the lunge distance by 60%. So they've taken both of these talents and shoved them together. So now you can lunge further and you can reduce the cooldown of your lunge. I think that's a decent thing to take two unpicked talents and make them better. Maiev. Warden's avatar duration reduced from 7 to 5 seconds. That sucks, especially since they didn't reduce the cooldown to compensate for that. Her WE from her level 1 cooldown reduction per hero tethered increased by 1.5 to, uh, 1 to 2.5. That's pretty good. Uh, armor duration from 2.5 to 3 on shadow armor. That's good. It's also a good talent. Uh, cruel change on level six. Cruel chain on level sixteen. Damage bonus per stack reduced from forty to thirty, and maximum damage from two hundred percent to one hundred fifty percent. Honestly, it was pretty crazy. If you've ever watched my "Why the Pros Play My Ev" video, you know that it can stack up fast, and before you know it, it could be doing fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred, seventeen hundred damage just by popping that all by herself. Uh, Vengeful knives bonus damage per hero hit is increased from 1.2% to 1.5%. Allows her to take out tanks a little bit easier, but she no longer has the absolute burst that she had in that build. Tracer, I expected some nerfs. Basic attacks reduced from uh, 28 to 27, which is a pretty small amount, but I think it's pretty decent. Cooldown increase of Blink from 8 to 9. Again, it's small, but I think both of these are actually going to hit Tracer harder than most people will imagine. We'll wait for a Critic uh, or a Chaos OS post on that. Zul'jin, level 4, Amani Rage active. Amani Rage is now part of Zul'jin's base kit. It was an activatable that cut your health in half and then you slowly regen that health back. Personally, I think Amani Rage being a baseline is just necessary. It was such a cool piece of his thing. And yes, they said it became a staple in almost every build for Zul'jin. I just like it. I think it's cool. It no longer grants armor. Its cooldown was increased. Then he gets a new talent, Amani Hide, which is a passive, reduces on Amani Rage 10 cool, er, uh, cooldown by 10 seconds, gain 10 armor while regenerating health. Like it. It's uh, they. You can go back to the old build that you liked, or he's just got a new thing for his other builds. Nazebo, Plague of Toads, damage per tick reduced by 18 to 17, Gargantuan attack damage reduced from 151.40, and health reduced. It's actually a surprising nerf. I wasn't expecting to see a nerf from Nazebo. His win rate's been consistently high, but his uh, pro play has been almost non-existent. So, it's interesting. I'll take it. The Toads kind of needed it. The Gargantuan kind of needed it. This makes me sad because I usually toss a Gargantuan in to just tank towers. But, hey, you know what? It, it was probably needed. Probius. Probius level 20. Probius loop. Required number of heroes hit to create a new warp rift was reduced from two to one that means if you hit someone with a single warp rift you just essentially drop a new warp rift down there that was a talent that wasn't picked up very much and apparently they wanted it to be picked up more zagara she needed a nerf she was being a bully in lane and after the, her recent changes even though they wanted her to be less of a bully in lane now she was an end game just nightmare so let's see what they do basic attack damage reduced uh hunter killer the uh, damage is reduced, the roach damage is reduced, and the cooldown of Nidus is increased, and the cooldown reduction per basic attacks while on creep is also decreased. Which means less Nidus's, less damage in lane, less of a bully, but I think these changes were all reasonable. I, don't, I think they're small enough that she can still fill the role that she needs to. So overall, I like it. Support changes. Ana, I personally need the, think that she needs a buff. Uh, she applies doses to structures. Increases the damage you do to structures. Also gives herself healing against structures. Not the buff I wanted, but I'll take it. Deckard, I think needed a nerf. More Nados. Cooldown reduction increase. Oh, that's a buff. Okay, I'll take it. Uh, the Lornado talent is one that I just never felt was necessary. So, uh, I always liked all, uh, stay a while. And now the level 20 more Nados is getting a little bit of a buff. Rhaegar, I personally think needs a buff. Uh, he... He's outclassed in the one thing that he's supposed to be good at, which is short fights. 
and uh and then he just has he doesn't have the mana costs or healing to keep up with someone like Deckard, Stukov, or Malfurion. So let's see what happens. Rhaegar, cooldown reduction uh on his Q, healing increased, mana cost perfect. I mean it's a good buff for him, allows him to keep in fights a little bit longer. Ancestral's healing was reduced by a good chunk, so he gets a little bit nerf in the short fights and he gets buffed in the long fights. I think that's okay. Spirit Walkers, mana cost reduction decreased. That's because he just got a mana uh, cost uh, reduction baseline. And we have Stormcaller, W mana cost, or sorry, maximum mana restoration increased from 40 to 100. From 40 to 100. So let's go to his talents really quick, and I want to show you guys what this talent is and why I think this is kind of, uh, this might be something interesting. Let's just say it this way. So, what this is, is he has a talent. On level 4, it's all about saving mana, right? Most people get the healing totem because you can heal people without using any mana. But, this is the talent, Stormcaller. When Lightning Shield damages an enemy, it restores 4 mana up to 40. Now, the mana cost of this ability to begin with is 40. So, you can cast a Lightning Shield and gain back and just break even on the Lightning Shield. Now, the thing that's interesting about this is it doesn't need to be an enemy hero. Meaning, if you pick him on uh, Infernal Shrines and you use this, or you pick him on any map that you're around minions, you would instantly cap up to 40 and get your mana cost back on Stormcaller. But the fact is, this change makes it to where you can effectively get an extra 60 mana after using your ability. 60 mana more than what you can normally get. And you'll probably get it every time if they're anywhere near any sort of minions. This is incredibly powerful and it's going to make it to where people will likely pick this up. Even in pro play over healing totem. Because of how much mana that's actually restoring. That's an incredible amount of mana. And it makes it to where you can essentially spam his new chain heal, which heals more. And it has a lower cooldown. So we're probably going to be seeing this a lot more. Now, on to his level 7 talents. Farsight, active. Uh, area revealed duration reduced from 10 to 5. Enemy revealed duration reduced from 4 to 3. Cooldown is cut in half. Size of reveal is reduced. It just made it a little bit less powerful when it was activated, but now it can be activated a lot more. I think it can be a stronger counter to stealth heroes. And just a decent reveal. Level 13, Earth Living Enchant on the Q, healing per second increased. So it used to give a healing per second from it. And Tidal Waves, cooldown reduction decreased from 1 to 0.75. Now, this is highlighted in orange, usually mean that they're going to mention something about it later. And the cooldown reduction on this talent with uh, up here... The one second that's off of that, that means that if you want to get... The one second back, essentially, if you're healing enough people, uh, it's it's not going to be perfect. But I still think with the W talent, we might see this being used. Just because we can get the mana back and just spam Qs. I think that would be pretty interesting. Rising Storm on level seven or level 16, the damage bonus per stack increases from 10 to 15%. Maximum stacks has been reduced. This means that it stacks faster on your bonus damage from your W, which is an ability you're already going to be spamming because it's going to be giving you your mana back, making this maybe a pickup for the long fights over the giant slow on the totem, but most likely the giant slow will still be picked in pro play. And in regular play, we'll see Rising Storm being picked up. Level 20, Farseer Blessing. And Farseer's Blessing is the upgrade to his R that makes it to where when he activates his Ancestral, the healing bonus, uh, it, it does an AoE heal. And this healing bonus was like a huge chunk, right? So let's pull it up really quick. Rhaegar's Talons, the Farseer's Blessing, increase the healing amount by 50%, and allies near the target are healed by 50%. Going back. The healing bonus has been buffed up to 75%. Nearby allies increases by 75%. So they buffed it, but my problem with this was usually the range and not the fact that someone was getting healed. And But that's fine. So let's look at this really quick. By increasing the potential of chain heal, Rhaegar feels more dynamic before level 10. He also relies less on ancestral, creating the healing output needed for a healer. The cooler down reduction will also make tidal waves, earth living enchant, Blood and Thunder, more attractive picks on their respective tiers, reducing the healing of Ancestral some to compensate for the strong base kit. During the internal testing of this change, we found that the extra healing 
uh, offered frequently res resulted in overhealing as a result. We think that the healing reduction won't feel as impactful as initially it seems. I am going to call this out. As someone with a 70% win rate on Rhaegar, Rhaegar is one of my top played healers, and I've played him a lot in the last few seasons. While these weren't the changes that I wanted to see, I like the changes that happened. With the increased healing and the low cooldowns on Chain Heal, I can already see a build that I would want to pick up with possibly the level 1 talent increase the radius of his W so that I can get more mana back from his W. Then I would still go cleanse at level 7. I don't care about the Farsight ch er, changes. Level 13, I would likely see myself being picking up probably the Q cooldown reduction instead of the... Um, the other talent because the increased healing that it has as well as the the uh the fact that i'm not going to have a mana problem which was the reason that i didn't want to pick this before level 16 i could see myself picking the rising storm talent because it ramps up much faster meaning that you can toss a w on your tank get a lot of damage off quickly get your mana back and you want to be constantly having W's out at all times, making that damage actually valuable. So if our team already has an engage, I will definitely be picking up Rising Storm at level 16. And if they don't have a gauge, I will probably still be picking up the totem as that 90% slows practically a root. Level 20, I even with this buff, I still see myself picking the Storm Shield. But overall, I like these changes. I think ultimately this is going to make Rhaegar a scarier threat from level 4 on to the point that he should be able to stay in fights for a long time as long as he can keep getting those Ws off. And he'll be really interesting. On to Anubarak. I expected a, a nerf. They removed Nullification Shield and simply gave him Hardened Shield. And I think that's more of a side grade than anything else. But we'll wait for the new Barak mains. Blaze. Uh, I expected his bunker cooldown to be increased. It did. I wasn't expecting any changes to combustion. But that's nice to see. They're trying to get people to see that there's two good ults. And honestly, combustion was already strong. It was just the bunker was incredibly good. Level 4, Feeding the Flames on Q, Oil Spill Cooldown Reduction Increased. This was kind of outclassed by his two other talents that were level 4, the bigger W and the W that doesn't, uh, the W that slows while the fire is going. So I like the fact that they're looking at the underutilized talents and looking for changes. The Diablo changes is strange. Uh, it looks like they still felt like he was a little bit weak. So what they did was they made it to where they reduced the cooldown of APOC, they increased the cooldown of Lightning Breath, they buffed his health, his health regen, and they did some slight buffs to some of his other abilities. So overall, I think it's pretty good. I really do. Like, I really think it's good. All of the changes that they just made to him. Joanna, she's seeing a huge health increase, a huge health regen increase, and now level 4, her Eternal Retaliation W now also restores 2.5 mana per hit. Now, this was the main reason why I didn't pick this talent, is because you could lower the cooldown of your W. Essentially what this talent was is for every enemy hit, not just enemy heroes, but enemy minions as well, you would lower the cooldown of your Condemn, which was your W that pulled people in. The problem was, is with the lowered cooldown, you would constantly be using it, and you would be essentially just burning out of your mana. So while it was a cool thing to get a little bit more wave clear, you could W and then get your Q and your E, uh, you would burn out of mana super fast. This makes it to where you can effectively get 25 mana back, uh, because that's, I believe, that's the most that it will work on. But let's see, Joanna, Talents, let's pull this up really quick. And on this one, so this was the talent right here. And Condemn's cooldown is lowered by 5.5 for each enemy affected up to a maximum of 10 targets. So it essentially takes 5 seconds off of your W, which is a 12 second cooldown. And it now gives you back uh, 2.5 mana per each one up to a maximum of 10 targets, so 25 mana. So effectively, you're getting back most of the mana of your W and most of the cooldown of your W. But, or or a decent chunk of it. Is it going to be picked? I don't know. I still like the wave clear. Uh, Ishbu showed me a build which you mark all the enemies and it does bonus damage. And, I, and it has a lot of wave clear. I actually like that build now for wave clear. Because it's less abilities and it's still pretty fast. But, who knows? This could be really good in fights because this was the problem with his talent. Is you constantly ran out of mana. So now you might be able to pull people in multiple times in fights. And it actually could be a better talent. 
Urel. In my opinion, Urel needed a lot of buffs. Let's get in here. Cooldown is reduced for her trait, which is awesome. Her Avenging Wrath, the damage is increased by 150 to 250. Remember that this one doesn't need to be charged to get max damage, so that's a pretty large upgrade for her, because in the middle of fights, she can now sneak out an extra uh, 75 damage, which is really strong. Level 4, we kind of wanted this to be nerfed, because this was an always pick. Uh, Aegis of Light, armor amount is increased from 25 to 35. This is if you jump into your team, or into the enemies and into your team, there's a range on your E that a maximum charge would give armor. This was a stupid amount of healing. Uh, everyone knew it, everyone saw it. Hand of Freedom now gives a, instead of 35% movement speed, 50%. So what they did was they made these so competitive, and they nerfed this one down to where it wasn't an always pick. I think this is an amazing change, personally. Righteous Momentum. This is a W talent that made it to where her holding her W to maximum charge would increase her movement speed up to 45%. But she was always slowed by 20% with her W. So it made it to where she was only increased by 25%. Effectively, this change does nothing. It just makes the tool it just makes it easier to understand. Level 16, Templar's Verdict. The W used to do a armor reduction uh for two seconds and it was a 20 percent armor reduction now it's a 20 percent armor reduction for four seconds every time you knock someone back at full charge the other level 16 talent is the cooldown reduction is decreased on her trait by two point or two to 1.5 this effectively makes it to where if you don't pick the trait talent that she her traits better but if you pick the trait talent it's still about the same amount of cooldown reduction Overall, they just wanted to make, this used to be an always pick, they wanted to make the other talents a more viable options. Most of these are side grades. Everyone was expecting really big buffs for Urel, and a lot of these were side grades. They took the main build that everyone was just out healing healers with, and they nerfed it by a lot. But then they grabbed a lot of the things that people liked about that build and they put them more baseline like the lower cooldown of that in case you want to go this you get more potential early on and i think it was a decent change but i don't know uh i think we're gonna be seeing her a little bit more with a lot of these changes but i still think that she might need just a little bit of tuning just a little bit of buffing and going from there the bug fixes that that happened, we saw the just an issue that could cause the game client to crash. We don't know which one this is. There was a lot of issues causing the game client to crash. We saw Medivh. This was the main one that brought the Volskaya to disappear, and now Volskaya is back. Alex Straza, Dragon Queen no longer reveals Alex Straza's location to the enemies through the fog of war until she's killed. Uh, enemy Alex Straza's model will no longer pers persist after she enters a vehicle in the fog of war. Thrall, Feral Resilience Talents Buff Bar Tooltip will now correctly state the uh, stacks grant the 50 physical armor. Shields, uh, Talents that deal damage versus shields such as Varian's Shattering Throw will no longer deal damage to target's health. This was the one shot from Varian on a Phoenix. This is fixed. And unfortunately I have a video coming out on Phoenix about this and it's going to be outdated. So I'll have to put that in a comment, whatever. Urel can no longer cast Bubble Hearth while she's being revived by Divine Palm. That was weird. Bubble Hearth now places a reduced cooldown if casted and is interrupted by Divine Palm. Okay. Urel no longer becomes permanently invulnerable if she is revived by Divine Palm while casting Bubble Hearth. All weird interactions. Collections. Backstories have now been restored for a number of Kerrigan, Luark, and uh, Rexar skin. Those are the, f the patch notes on the forums. I will link this in the description. And you can check out any of these on your own. Honestly, what am I most excited for? I'm most excited for the Phoenix nerfs and I'm most excited for the Rhaegar buffs. And that's also just because I am kind of a Rhaegar main that's not been able to play Rhaegar for a while. I am intrigued by the Nazebo nerfs. I am intrigued by some of the other changes that they did, like the Zul'jin one. Uh, I kind of predicted the Tracer ones, I predicted the Blaze ones, well, except for the buff to Combustion, didn't expect that. And, I don't know, I think some of these are really, really cool. So, I uh, yeah, thank you everyone for watching, and feel free to check out some of my other videos.